why. Why God will, glory to God, cause the church to be raptured. I want to give you praise and honor and glory, Lord God. Lord, as we examine why the rapture must happen today. And Father, we're going to look at the great catching away, the great disappearance of possibly hundreds of millions of people at one given time. Father, I thank you that here, Lord, today, Lord, we want to Lord, modern man's insecurities, and Father, the best way to remain secure. So to you be the praise, the honor, and the glory, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to say to you that right across the globe right now, there are massive insecurities. Glory to God, there are things happening that are unprecedented and certainly spoken of in in the Bible, and uh, particularly in the book of Daniel and Ezekiel and Revelations. Glory to God. But I want to say to you that there is absolutely nothing to fear at all when you're in the hands of the Lord because perfect love casts out all fear. He is perfect love. And today I'm going to demonstrate to you how he shows us that perfect love. There is no fear in those who love him, only security. Today I want to examine man's dilemma His dilemma is this, I keep hearing these words repeated over and over in the newspapers, glory to God, on our televisions. It's been heralded across YouTube and all sorts of things, and I keep hearing the words uncertain times. The truth is, it may be very uncertain times to those who don't know God, but for those who know God, their future is incredibly secure. Their lives are totally safe, shielded, protected, and guarded. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord. If we can have our first scripture, please. Trust in the Lord with all of our heart, with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding in all of your ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. It is pretty amazing, but God has already got our paths in the palm of his hand. The conclusion that we come to is that first word, trust. You've got to trust God to which much loved and faithful people is in Revelation 3.10. It says, because you have kept my command to persevere. Glory to God. There's going to be some perseverance required because the end times can get a little bit rough. But he says, because you have persevered, because you have trusted God, I will also keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who are upon the earth. The next portion of Scripture in verse 11 says, Hold fast, don't worry about going there, hold fast to what you have. Let no one steal the crown from you. God will defend, protect, and look after his prepared bride. He is the bridegroom, and we the church are the beloved bride of Christ. Today, we examine why the church must be raptured. God's judgment, which some people believe has already started, others don't. That's okay, we're not going there. God's judgment will come upon an unrighteous generation. And the Word of God tells us that judgment is for the unrighteous and not the righteous. Persecution will happen globally. It's happening right now. Glory to God. And I want you to think about this. In Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, it says, God's people are not subject to God's wrath. God describes himself as the bridegroom, describes the church as the bride. The God that I serve is not into domestic violence. He's not going to beat up his wife for seven years. He's not going to let her go through the wrath of God that, is, that will come upon the earth and judge a godless generation. Matthew 24 says quite clearly, gives an accurate description of what's happening on planet earth right now. And see, when you look at the signs of the times, they're everywhere. This week, in a particular place in, in Iceland, they had 600 earthquakes in 24 hours. Yellowstone National Park, they had 1,200 earthquakes in two weeks. What's going on? 
Planet Earth is vibrating with birth pain saying the second coming draws near. We see things that are unprecedented. We, we see volcanoes. We, we see things like, glory to God, abortion is at an all-time high. Suicide is at a global high. Gay marriage is being received globally. There's a global acceptance. Gender realignment is now being allowed where people can actually choose what they want, who they want to be. There's a definite antichrist spirit arising globally. Anti-Semitism is gaining rapid momentum. Matter of fact, everything good and godly is being pushed out and it's like anything and everything goes, glory to God, and becoming acceptable. When we study the book of Revelation, it tells us clearly, clearly what's happening. And I want to say to you that in chapters 4 and 5 of Revelation, it speaks about the preparation of the coming wrath of God. It's all the two, two chapters are dedicated to get ready, he's coming. Get ready, the second coming is upon us. Chapters 6 and 7 give a detailed description of the destruction of what will happen when God's wrath is unleashed upon the earth. Absolutely no social gospel here. Chapter 8 introduces the trumpets of God, God's judgment. Now I'm going to make this very clear, but glory to God. In Israel, many reports came out of Israel, and people heard trumpets blowing, but no one was blowing the trumpet. Then it started in America. And then it started in England, New Zealand, and Australia. Vicky and I were sitting out our back patio overlooking the creek and um, just having a cup of coffee and having a nice husband and wife chat. And we heard a trumpet blowing. It was very, very distinct. I said to Vicky, I said, I don't think any of our neighbours got trumpets. And it stopped. Then days later, both of us heard it again. It could be one of our neighbours blowing a trumpet. I don't know. What I do know is I heard a trumpet. What is all this about? Is this to scare people, frighten people? No, we, we as a church have a duty of care to make you aware of what's going on so that we can see clearly that God's judgment will come upon this earth and judge an ungodly generation. The judgment of God, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom and and he doesn't want you to be frightened, but he wants you to reverence and respect what he's saying. So judgment corrects us. When we know it's coming, happy is the man who God corrects and receives God's correction. Judgment sobers us to be seriously sober, vigilant, watchful in prayer, God's judgment actually humbles us, knowing that God will be exalted, reassures us that he shall make a way of escape. And the word of God says in Revelation 9.1, the fifth angel sounded the trumpets, and I saw a star fall from heaven, And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Isaiah 42, verse 14, verse 12 says, Oh, how you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you have been cut down to the ground. So we're talking about when Satan was exited out of heaven. He was Lucifer, the worship leader. But in his heart, his heart was filled with pride because he was absolutely perfect in every way. And it says that I saw Satan fall like lightning. That's 184,000 miles per second. Satan wasn't evicted from heaven. He was hurled out of heaven. And he was hurled out of heaven upon the earth. Luke 10, verse 17 to 19 says, And the 70 returned and even the... And And the 70 returned and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us. And Jesus said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Verse 19, 
He said, Behold, I give you authority to trample over serpents and scorpions, over all the power of the enemy. Now, we need to understand something. When God says you have all power and all authority over all things in heaven and earth, that means, that's, that means there's nothing left for the devil because you have, you have received all power and all authority over all things in heaven and on earth. And the only power that Satan has over any born-again, spirit-filled Christian is the power that we give him when we yield to those, those thoughts that are projected into our minds. I love the way this scripture finishes off. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing. What does that mean? That means nothing. The place that God is talking about absolutely exists. And there's a place that you can get in God where every devil in hell will be petrified of you and your prayers. The devil doesn't want you to know this. Glory to God. Because should you discover, glory to God, what he's saying to us right now, you realize that you are no longer subject to the abuse of Satan. I'll give you a classic example in Luke 8. It says there was a man from the city who had demons for a long time. Verse 28, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God, I beg you. Hello. Keep going, next scripture, because you're going to find the demons begged him. Glory to God. I beg you. Do not torment me. Verse 31, and they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss. So that's a specific place. And then it says, so they begged. Three times we see where the demons are actually begging Jesus. I want you to think about this because the same Jesus resides inside of you. He hasn't given you less power. It's all there, but we've got to walk with him and understand exactly what he's saying. It says here, I beg you, they begged, they begged him, so they begged him that they might enter a herd of swine. And it says here that he allowed it for whatever reason. The demons came out of the man, entered the swine, and the herd went ran violently down into a steep place, into the lake and drowned. Suicide is one of the traits of Satan. And it goes like this, glory to God. Today we have the most, the highest suicide rate in the world is happening right now. So what happens? A person has some thoughts, they get discouraged, they get disheartened, they get depressed, and it ends up in a place of no hope. I want to say to you, we serve the God of hope. We serve the God of hope. There's always hope in Jesus Christ. There's always a way out in Jesus. The demons that we're talking about here, glory to God, is it okay to preach this stuff? You okay, you okay with everything? The demons we're talking about didn't want to go to a place called the abyss. When you study that in the Greek, it actually comes from the word abuso. And there are demons that are reserved, glory to God, that are called or come under the label of the Abuso demons. Jude 6 says, the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their abode. God has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the great judgment day, for the end times. And the thing is, what happens is, as God is pushed out of society and everything else goes, these demons become active. Revelation 20 verse 10 says, the devil who deceives them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, the beast and the false prophet, where they will be tormented day and night. This is a place that you want to make sure you never go to. It's a place that, glory to God, I was bound for before I became a Christian, I was demon-possessed. And I came to God and God set me free. And I went from being hell bound to heaven bound. And now I secure 
my eternity. I hold on to it. I battle for that in prayer. This place is described in Revelations 9.2. It says it's a bottomless pit and smoke rose from within the pit, smoke of a great furnace. Isaiah 60 verse 2 says, For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness shall cover the people, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory shall be seen upon you. God is looking for those lamps that are going to shine in the darkness. And you know, darkness is simply the absence of light. When you bring light into darkness, darkness has to flee. So I want to look at what God is saying here, glory to God, about this bottomless pit. Since the year 2000, crime has increased 420%. It's a global first. September 11th, we saw the spirit of terrorism when the Twin Towers came down. That was a global first. Never happened before that way. On the 23rd of September 2015, some amazing things took place. Global occult leaders met from every nation, and they called their seminar the power elite. It was a global first. The topic of discussion was the desecration of the bride of Christ. That was their discussion. Also on their agenda, glory to God, was the rise of the fallen one. So you've got all these occult leaders meeting together on this one particular day, the 15th of September, 2015, on the same address, had never happened before. On the same day, the Israeli Prime Minister meets with the Russian Prime Minister, never happened before, global first. And just so happens on the 23rd of September 2015, it happened to be the Day of Atonement, the day of Rosh Hashanah, one of the holiest days, one of the days it's set apart. And all this took place on the most recognized, holiest day on the Jewish and Christian calendar. Revelation 9.3. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth and was given to them power as the scorpions have on the earth have power. The smoke that you see here is an end time deception worldwide. First thing that comes to mind is www, World Wide Web. They represent rebellion. I'm going to prove that to you very shortly. Rebellion in the form of a worldwide falling away from the truth of God. Who believes that we're seeing that happen now? Globally, we're falling away from truth. The scorpions are false prophets, and I'm going to prove that to you as well. Every detestable, ungodly teaching is happening out there. We're having churches, I'm not having a go at Christianity, because I am one, but there are certain churches who are having rethink seminars, and they called the pastors from certain places and said, we're going to rethink the Bible. Hello, the Bible does, this is where the false prophets are arising, and ungodly teaching is taking place in some places. It comes in the form of a social gospel. In 2015, we saw the introduction of the Safe School Acts. Along with that came neutral bathrooms. So we're looking at two things, deception and rebellion. Proverbs 30 verse 27 says, the locusts have no king, yet they advance in ranks. Total rebellion, no authority or restraint, yet they are. Because God's been pushed out and the devil's been welcomed in in many different ways. Glory to God. We see this rebellion happening worldwide. We see the spirits of deception, the scorpions. Revelation 9.4 says, glory to God, that they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men. What is the seal of God? I want to look at that right there, the seal of God. What is the seal of God? Well, in the Exodus, glory to God, they applied the blood over the doorpost and the windows and and the spirit of death passed over. The seal of God is those who love God with all of their hearts, with all of their beings, with all that is. They are sealed by the love of of God because perfect love casts out all fear. 
and you have nothing to fear if you're walking hand in hand with God. And this is the hour stay close to God. We really have two choices, to be sealed of God or to become open slather, which we're seeing. Revelation 9.5 And they were not given authority to kill, but to torment. And you know, we're seeing the torment in many, many different ways. We're seeing mental health issues go through the roof. Worldwide, there is a great falling away from godliness, from what is normal, from what is right. The so-called wisdom of man, which is failing, is somehow overtaking the unfailing wisdom of God. Isaiah 9.15 says, The elder and the honourable, he is the head. The prophet who teaches a lie, he is the tail. So we have misleading teachers there teaching false doctrines. The social gospel is the bait of Satan. It just waters everything down. We, we hear things, terminologies like once saved, always saved. No, once saved, you've got to walk the walk. Got to get close to God and stay close to God. So let's examine these two things, the, the spirits of rebellion and deception. Scorpions, they're part of a spider family. They have two main regions, a head and a tail. Tail has a sting. They're nocturnal, active in darkness. Isn't that amazing? They're active in darkness. The young remain with the mother for two weeks. Then they toddle off at two weeks old to be totally dependent. Their venom is a complex mixture of neurotoxins. They attack the nervous system of a human being. They can result in severe pain, swelling, numbness, breathing difficulties, respiratory problems. Death can occur of the heart of respiratory failure. The Word of God is speaking to us quite clearly. In Revelation 9.19 it says, and the power was in their mouth teaching false doctrines, social gospel, and in their tails they sting, and their heads are like serpents, having heads with which they do harm. Head knowledge is not what God's requiring. Heart relationship is what God wants. How do you get rid of scorpions? I found this really interesting. The first thing they say is modify your house surroundings. Isn't that good? Modify how you live. It says remove all trash from around your home. Keep your grass mowed, trees pruned. Sounds a bit like, a bit like wicks trimmed. Keep your house in good repair. Make sure there's no cracks or holes where these things can access. So glory to God, our first point was God's judgment is coming and God warns us to prepare our hearts for what's coming. Point two, there is absolutely nothing to fear, nothing to fear provided you are walking with God, in God, through God, that God is your number one priority in life. The book of Joel says, speaks about the end times. It says, the like of whom has never been, surely nothing will escape them. Revelation 9, 4 says that the men who are not sealed with God are subject to these things. 2 Timothy 2, 19 says, nevertheless the solid... The Lord God knows who are his. And let every man who names the name of Jesus Christ depart from all iniquity. God is saying, live a holy and righteous life in these end times. God is saying, get close to God. God is saying, have a love relationship with God. God is saying, hear what he's saying right now. Because I didn't come up with this stuff. The Word of God says in Revelation 9, 7, the shape of the locust was like horses prepared for battle and on their heads were crowns like something of gold. That's the spirit of mammon. That's what this is all about. Their faces were yet like the faces of men. Verse 8, they had hair like women's hair and teeth like, 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 like lion's teeth. 
Revelation 9, 9. Their breastplates were of iron. I want you to think about that. It's like they had steel over their hearts. Some of the reports that I've heard over this war in Gaza, absolutely atrocious what has happened. And what we need to understand is, glory to God, when you remove God out of a person's life, all decency, all morals, all scruples, all righteousness goes. Goes on to say, glory to God, Revelation 9.10, they had tails like scorpions and stings in their tails and their power was to hurt men. Why is God repeating himself? Why is God making this clear to us? Glory to God. By the way, I might add to you that out of the whole Bible, what you're hearing right now, Revelation 9 is the hardest of all to bring forth, discern, understand, and get right. So I'm doing the best that I can with what God has given me here. The Word of God says, glory to God, in Isaiah 9.14, the Lord will cut off head and tail from Israel. Very specific. Very specific. It says, for the leaders of the people cause them to err. And those who are led by them will be destroyed. So God is saying we need to get into truth, whole truth and nothing but the truth, and understand that God is truth. And God is bringing something to us today so we understand that there's nothing to fear about the end times, but the end times are not coming, they're here. Glory to God. Not getting one amen today. Revelation 9.11 says, And they had as a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name is Abaddon. And he had the name called Apollyon. Abaddon is destroyer. Apollyon is prince of the air. So we're seeing things unprecedented coming here through these scriptures. John 10.10 10 says, The thief only comes except to kill, steal, and destroy. And again, I say to you clearly, there's nothing to fear. Nothing to fear when you're in God. Ephesians 2.2 2 says, You once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. That's Apollyon. And the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Satan always has, always will work through one thing, disobedience. What's God say? If you love me, obey me. If you love me, obey me. Revelation 9.14 says, And the sixth angel who had the trumpet, four angels who were bound on the great river Euphrates were released to kill one third of mankind. Great distress will come upon the earth. And this is why God will take his bride out. This is why we will be raptured. This is why we will be caught up. This is why God will not allow his three and a half years or get beaten up for seven, seven odd years. What we need to understand is that around this time right here, everyone left on planet earth is pretty much demonized. See, when the church goes, Grace, mercy will go. Just like the angels said to Lot, Lot and his wife and his two daughters, he said, I, we got to take you out because judgment won't come upon Sodom and Gomorrah until we take you out. And God has done that over and over. He removes the righteous before he rains down judgment because the church is not subject to judgment. The church is we will be persecuted, we have been persecuted and it's happening right now, right across the globe. In Australia, man, we got it good here. But there are places on, on the earth right now, a lot of the Muslim countries where Christians are being persecuted right now. A lot of places where churches are being burnt down. It talks about a great distress such as never before will come upon the earth. It's described as the great tribulation. Not just the tribulation, the great tribulation. 
And the Word of God says in Revelation 9, 16, and the number of the army that was gathered, the horsemen, were 200 million. Gog and Magog, which is China and Russia, will march against Israel, and they will meet in the valley of Megiddo, which is Armageddon. Glory to God. But Israel won't have to lift a finger because the rider on the white horse shows up and he treads the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the almighty God. Bridle deep, that's six foot eight. That's a lot of blood. But God will destroy the armies that have come against his beloved Israel. Revelation 9.17 says, And I saw horses in the vision, and he who sat on them had breastplates, and the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouth came fire and smoke and brimstone. You know, I was praying about this. Imagine today if you've seen the modern military where they literally have every part of their body covered firing a rocket launcher. And John is having this amazing vision of these incredible things, you know, fire shooting out of their mouths. Wow. They would have thought the man was crazy. But the Word of God goes on to say in Revelation 18 to 20, three plagues will hit the planet and mankind. 19 goes on to say, for there was power in their mouth, words spoken, and in their tails, deception imparted, having heads which with they do harm. Verse 20, but they did not repent of the sins. We're seeing a generation where sin just don't matter. It's just part of life. It's how you live. Do not partake in it. The Word of God says that they have Idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, wood. The idols of men, I will say to you clearly, are falling at the feet of the Lord our God. And there are so many people idolizing different things. But mammon is the greatest. People just pursuing money. Pursuing this, pursuing that. Well, we should be pursuing God. Revelation 9.21, God repeats himself again. And they did not repent of their murders and their sorceries. The word sorceries comes from pharmica. Pharmica speaks about drugs. And as a prison string to a couple of drug cooks who shared with me what they do, when they do their little, mix up their little batch, they actually pray over it, not to God. And they invite the darkness to come. And that is why the Word of God says, Glory to God, it is unwise for a man to lose control of his faculties. And that's exactly what happens. Because in prison, it's been proven now, Glory to God, I don't know how many people I spoke to in there, how many men I spoke to who said the same thing. I did this under the influence. But it's not me. I'm not like this. I'm not like this. I don't do these things. But under the influence of ice or whatever. I want you to think about this. We're having to retrain our paramedics. We're having to retrain our police force. We're having to retrain all those people who are on the front line. Glory to God, who we need to be praying for. And this church does. Because we're facing things that are not normal. And people, I've seen people, glory to God. We had a men's meeting one night and uh, we had 27 men and this, this, this young man turned up from Atherton and um, he partook in the Bible study. Just seemed like a really decent guy. We finished our meeting about 9 o'clock. 10.30, I had a phone call from emergency. I see you, Mariba Hospital. They said, Pastor, there's a man down here who's begging us for you to come and see him. I jumped in the car, went down there only to find this, this young man, just such a decent young lad, totally off his face. And when he saw me, I walked through the doors. Paddy Wagon was down there, two officers standing there. He was standing in the middle of them. 
And he said, Pastor, get him off me. Get him off me. He was squirming, squealing. He ran towards me. Worst thing he could have done because the police officers tackled him to the ground. There were two police They threw him in the back of the paddy wagon. And I'm not lying. It's one of those fiberglass backs. You could see the imprint of him kicking, trying to kick that door. Amazing, incredible power. He was screaming the whole way, get them off me, get them off me. He knew what the answer was. And that's why it's unwise to partake of these things because that's where the demons do come. We're seeing a lot of things happen. Hard, mind-altering drugs. Public services having to be retrained. I've heard terminologies like the ice war. In places like Washington, D.C., glory to God, we, we see the drug trade outstrip everything else. It's amazing. We see things like witchcraft, spirit mediums, channeling, horoscopes, Ouija boards, all this in practice, transgender, homosexuality being publicly accepted. And guess what? Open your mouth and you're up for hate crimes. Isn't it amazing? The devil's trying to shut people up. 2 Timothy 3.13 says, But evil men, imposters, will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Does anyone agree with what they're hearing here today? That there is, there is a worldwide deception out there, and it's on the move. It's on the move. Point three. Point three. Nothing can harm you the church, the bride of Christ, if they stay on course and stay in faith. I go back to Revelation 3.10, because you have kept my command to persevere. God loves us so much that he was warning us clearly. For four weeks, this, this church has been teaching the rapture, saying we've got to get rapture ready. Yeah, we do have to get rapture ready. Proverbs 1.33 says, whoever listens to me will dwell in safety will be completely secure, will li we'll live a life without any fear of evil. Who, who likes these promises? We go back to that scripture, please. Who likes the promises? We can dwell in safety. We can be secure. How? We're going to be sealed with God's love. As we, the church, love him, he seals us and keeps us. And he said, you'll dwell in safety. You'll be secure. You'll live a life without any fear of evil. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. How amazing is that? That the God that we serve, our incredible God, has done all this. And his generous offer today is this. It's entirely your choice where you spend eternity. Entirely your choice. Smoking or non-smoking. Sorry, I couldn't resist that one. Glory to God. God is offering us security. But we've got to make up our mind that we're going to be committed to Him, walk with Him, and be sealed in His love, and be spared. And this is why, I say it clearly, this is why the church must be raptured before the coming judgment. Because God's people are not subject to God's wrath. Glory to God. I'm going to complete this today with something a little bit different. Glory to God. And um, I just watched that. Glory to God. Report, and this is the report today from Israel. If we can just watch that. Glory to God. I want you to take notice of what's being said. Hallelujah. This is day 49 in the Gaza-Israel war and the first day to the cessation of hostilities between Israel and Hamas that went into effect in order to release some 50 Israeli hostages in exchange 
for the release of 150 Palestinian prisoners. The majority of the Israeli hostages that are expected to be released today compose of women and children. This war is far from being over, and the IDF is prepared to resume its offensives against southern Gaza and against Hamas with full force immediately once this ceasefire will conclude. This ceasefire relates only to Hamas in the Gaza Strip, as Israel's northern front against Hezbollah in Lebanon still continues, and Iran is attempting to supply Hezbollah with additional ammunition. Israel's biggest ally, the United States, is preventing Iranian weapons convoys to reach Lebanon through Syria by identifying and neutralizing trucks that are filled with ammunition and long-range missiles that are sent from Iran to Hezbollah in Lebanon in order to be used against Israel. The Iranians are disguising these weapons shipments within humanitarian trucks that are supposedly delivering humanitarian aid to the Middle East. In Israel's southern front against Yemen, the United States was able to identify and destroy a huge weapons stockpile that was sent from Iran to its proxies, the Houthis, in Yemen, in order to carry out additional attacks against the Jewish state of Israel. The U.S. were able to that were sent in order to carry out attacks against the Israel's southern city of Elat. We see that the U.S. involvement in this war is helping Israel defeat its enemies by cutting off the supply of weapons from Iran to its proxies, the Houthis in Yemen, Hezbollah in the north, and Hamas in the Gaza Strip. The United States had strategically positioned its aircraft carrier in the Gulf of Amman, near Iran and Yemen, strategically positioning it in order to be able to carry out offensives against Iranian proxies and to cut off the weapons supply chain that is delivering weapons and ammunition to Iranian proxies in this war against Israel. We see that this war is no longer an Israel-Hamas war. This is a regional war, and Iran is leading the offensive against Israel and the United States. In the past 24 hours, we have received reports that Iranian militias carried out a surprise attack against a U.S. base in Iraq, in the area of Al-Assad. These militias were equipped with drones that drop RPG bombs on the forces. The United States sent F-35 bombers to locate and destroy the operators of these drone units, while at the same time sent a special radar airplane to the sky that was scanning the premises, seeking for additional Iranian militias that were prepared to carry out additional attacks. During these searches, the U.S. was able to identify some seven Iranian militia units that were prepared to carry out missile attacks against the U.S. base. The United States was able to destroy all of these Iranian units. You can see now that this war involves more than just Israel and Hamas against Israel and the United States. During these times, we need to unite. We need to unite in sharing the truth of what really is happening in this region to the rest of the world so that they understand that this war that started between Israel and Hamas in Gaza affects them and it will spread to the United States, to Europe, if we will not stop it here in this region. And moreover, we need to be united in prayer, in prayer that our God will protect the United States troops and the Israeli troops and other troops that are standing together with Israel in this battle against the evil forces of Iran. Please pray for the peace of Jerusalem. 
please pray. I received this prophetic word. Glory to God. Prophetic watchman on the wall, take your place. I am calling you to the front lines and I'm calling you to take your place upon the wall. Watch day and night for you are now called up to the full time, full time into the army of the Lord. There is no longer any time to waste. There is no longer any time to delay. But I am now calling my watchmen forward, my prayer warriors forward. I'm calling all intercessors forward and I'm saying, take your place, take your place. And again, I say to you, take your place for the hour is late. The enemy is close and daily he gains ground. I'm saying to my children, to my prayer warriors, to my intercessors, to my prophets, you must stop the enemy now. If you do not do so, you will pay the price and it will be a heavy price to pay. I say all of this to you in love and I say all that I can to you in love as your heavenly father, as the Lord your God, as the God of angel armies, take your place upon my wall, stand upon the wall day and night, may be found. And as you do, you will see a turning for the better. As you do, you will see my hand move amongst the nations. But I say to you, Now is the time, now is the time. And again I say, now is the time. Take your place upon the wall. I believe there is a heralding going out from heaven that it's time to pray like we've never prayed before. It's time for the church to come. That's why we have all the prayer meetings that we have. Glory to God, it's not like we've got nothing better to do so we just have put on a prayer meeting. Our prayers are going up to heaven and right across the globe. It's time to seek the face of God. It's time to be like the sons of Ishika. It's time to know the signs of the times and it's time to know what to do.